Hello, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of Shoe Podcast, the only sneaker podcast that is still talking about the sneakers from 2023 in 2024. But the holidays were kind of a crazy time, so y'all just bear with us. I am your co-host, Ryan Landry. I am your co-host, Tanner Young. Here we are closing out season five, five whole years wow. of uh, of doing this little show on the internet here, but our first full year of doing video episodes. So, you know, a quick little, uh. quick little moment for that. That was a big, big moment for us there. But this, uh, like I said, this episode should have come out a week, maybe two weeks ago. I don't know, but the holidays, I'm not, I'm not really like feeling sorry for it. You know, like here, here's the thing. Tell me the thing. We were smart, okay, because mm-hmm. all the big names, okay, they, we let them get it out of the way. That's right. Okay, but then sometimes, you know what happens is, okay, speaking of the holidays, okay, you eat your main dinner, okay, then you go sit down in the living room, you know, an hour or two, maybe three pass, and you're like, hmm, we still got leftovers out? And you look into the kitchen, yeah. they still got the, they the still got all roll. the trays out. It's yeah, always the like, bread roll. Me- yeah let me mosey back in there maybe maybe make a plate just a side that's what this is yeah all your this is your favorite sides portion of the holiday meal i I like it and but it's also but it also is like the main portion because it's our big episode of the year because it's sneaker of the year you know not to downplay the significance it was a great analogy but i don't want us to downplay the significance of what we're about to do here we're about to sit down for unveil i would call it probably at least an hour who knows maybe not longer uh and talk about there our top three sneakers of 2023, Ooh. but we're also going to talk about, you know, what did our fans like? How did, you know, halfway through the year in, in what was it? July of 2023, mm-hmm. we predicted where we might end up for the year. How did those predictions age? So we got a couple of little fun topics lined up for the evening here. Let's get it. Let's get it. I am curious for you before we jump in here. And this is something we didn't discuss. So it's a bit off the cuff here. If you had to think about, maybe one or two what i'll call major trends that happened in sneakers this year Mm. that you think we'll look back and be like 2023 was the year of this trend or that trend are there any that come to mind that you felt like were like Mm. especially prevalent this year and if you need a moment i can give you one or two that i've got yeah if you got some lined up you go ahead let me see if i can think i think one of the big ones we'll remember this year for is that 2023 was the year that the y2k tech runner shoe kind of came back into popularity here huge year for shoes like you know the a6 gel kyano and the new balance 1906 and uh even the vomero 5 kind of getting in on it a little bit there just tech runners mesh bright silver metallic panels really kind of i think dominated a lot of the social media feeds especially around the summertime agreed Mm -hmm. agreed that was uh that was kind of the first thing that that came to my mind. Yeah, uh, was very much um, either like I guess you could say that Y two K runner or um, I'm not sure. I know back in the day, trainers were really really big, mm-hmm. um, especially in like those European markets. So okay. almost like, yeah. is it trying to either a refresh that market? I don't know how the European Eurocore. Um, is going or is it like we had an insane amount of success yeah in um that market can we replicate it shout out uh, our our united states market shout out all our european listeners y'all go ahead let us know real quick what's going on across the plot the, across the pond oops blundered it blundered it right out of the gate i don't know if it's called the Yeesh. pond or the plond yeah sorry guys that's a uh that's an american education hard at work for you right there hallelujah does not help that the state that we come from is at the bottom of the pack when it comes to education as well. Yep. Couldn't even, couldn't even probably name all the states here. So could not. And you want the capitals while we're at it? No shot. No shot. Mm -mm. Presidents Mm -mm. not going to happen. All of the lyrics to the, you know, the, the bunny hop probably. Well, yeah, I could, I could probably, yeah, Yeah. that's a staple. You give me the, don't get me started. Don't get us started. We won't do an episode. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. Oh man, I, I would say I think less of styles and I guess more of just like moments. Yeah. Like I think there's there's those those big moments that happened. Um, which I didn't really want to get into because I think we're gonna Yeah, we'll get into that within the list. So I thought more of less fashion trends mm. of the year and more of like these were big moments yeah. that I think we'll look back in of like, yep, yeah, that definitely was twenty twenty three. 
Well, and maybe on that same note and without getting far too into it, I do think kind of the trend that wasn't a trend this year was that I don't know if there were many sneakers of the year, but there were a lot of sneakers of the week. Like, I feel like we just had yeah, oh, so wow, many yeah. releases this year of just like jam packed every week. It was a banger. Whereas like even, you know, you and I can think back to the first couple of years of doing this podcast where it's like every if you were at lucky every month, you would have a banger like you'd have one big one of the month. And if you missed it, maybe the next month would come around. But this year, it just felt like, you know, maybe the highs weren't as high, but there were so many more highs that kind of came around, you know? Yeah, social media influencer definitely on fire yeah. uh, this this year yeah. when it comes to marketing, at least. Yeah, I would agree. So that's kind of the top level, what we saw there. But before we start talking about our favorite sneakers, we want to talk about some of your favorite sneakers. If you didn't catch it, we put out a call on our Instagram in our discord community and i think on our youtube community as well asking y'all what your favorite sneakers of 2023 were uh and so we're going to talk about a couple of y'all's answers right here on the air in the future if you want to be featured on one of our episodes there's always a chance make sure you're following us on all the social media platforms at shoot podcast if you see us post the poll go ahead and throw a little response in there we might just choose your answer and give you a shout out on an upcoming episode Social so. media validation. Mm. Come on. There you come go. On. Be a little part of our community. It's a fun time. Yeah. We asked y'all what was your favorite sneaker of 2023. And after my wife responded, chicken butt, here are some of the other best answers that we got. Uh from the Discord at Ooh. Other Ryan said uh his sneaker of the year was the Nike SB and the Uto Dunks, which I gotta say, these definitely kind of grew on me the more and more I looked at them. Not so much that I kind of connected and resonated with the story or you know you mm-hmm. the athlete as he is but just i mean it's a good clean colorway obviously i think that's probably the big thing about these anyways you know yeah i i enjoy uh very simple color gonna go with a lot of stuff and honestly the 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 brown does i think i was kind of like i don't really know how that meshes um but i agree with you the more i kind of kept seeing these just every now and again through like a maybe like an instagram explore page or whatever mm-hmm. maybe i was like that it does give it enough to a little kind pop. of separate it yeah yeah a little pop but still goes with like that subtlety that is the mm-hmm. shoe so i think a really good really good one right here yeah for sure i didn't see it on too many people's or like too many other sneaker media's top 10 list but i think it was a good one um yeah. might be controversial i think that on just a dunk, not a SB dunk, might have been a big bigger hitter. I don't know. I think SB gets so much more. Kind of, it makes bigger waves love. when they do it. Yeah, I think it gets a lot more love. That's true. That's true. Uh, from Instagram at Simple Fits and Kick said that their sneaker of the year was the Saucony and J Tips Grid Azura 2000, which this was you know his big debut collaboration he did with Saucony this year, and then followed it up with the What's the Occasion pack that we talked about on the last mm-hmm. episode that we just did he definitely came out swinging on this first one you know just like your left splash yeah left nothing to you know the imagination there it was like we're just gonna throw it all on the shoe uh for me it's a bit too much and just a bit too for my everyday like for what i wear a lot of the time this is just a bit yeah. too much all out there but i know a lot of people love this and i think you know credit where credit is due for Jade Tips to blow up a silhouette and a brand like Saucony, which is not, you know, typically the front of the pack, what you like think of yeah. must have must have killed it for a lot of people on this one. Yeah, I could see why this shoe um would be a favorite, would be a big one. I agree with you. It doesn't fit me personally. Mm-hmm. Um I don't know why I'm thinking of it now. What would be super cool, and I'm just giving this idea out to any big designer brand after j tips just had a slam of a year here we come on our podcast to let you know if you really want to do something next year go ahead would be a cool tip (laughs) i think you do a shoe like mr tips here's a cool tip for you all right cool tip for you you do a shoe like this Mm -hmm. okay but then every sneaker that you do after this is just one element of this but like the entirety of a shoe so it's got a lot of different like, yeah you do a different silhouette and it's just more of that floral you do another one that's like that zebra another yeah. one that's blue, you know things like that 
I think that would be cool. You're trying there to you like go. just a little. You're trying, but you're basically just trying to reverse engineer a what the shoe. The what the right? Instead yeah. of making a what the after you make all the shoes, make the no. what the first, and then make all the shoes. Pretty novel. You, you make you make the what the, and then people go, "This is this they is say, crazy." There's what a lot the? of different things. Right. This is a lot of things going on, and then you hit them with like, uh, "Oh, here you go." Here's yeah. What I was. Meanwhile, Saucony, yeah, Saucony, uh oh, tied to the five year contract because I got to make seven shoes now. <laughs> hey, listen, I'm trying to make you money, make money. <laughs> right, exactly. You know I mean? That's yeah. all it is. He's playing four D chess over here. We're playing checkers. Exactly. Uh, and then the last shoe I think that we've got here, also from Instagram, at Enrique Perez, said that their sneaker of the year was the Nike SB Jordan Four. Uh, to quote TikTok, surprise, surprise. You know, I think it's at a lot of this. I think it's at the top of a lot of people's list and it's not a yeah. bad shoe. It's a clean shoe. Uh, but you can, again, if you want to check out last week's episode or whenever it came out, the last episode that we did, you can probably hear a lot of our thoughts on this shoe. Yeah. I, I mean, talked about clean, it for a minute. I think it's, I think it's cool. I know a lot of people, their biggest thing is they, you know, they talk about how it does have a different fit. Yeah. Than a Jordan like four, um, simple colorway clean colorway mm-hmm. but yeah for i think for the both of us it being that number one i don't think there i think there were some other things that uh made our list a little bit different but perfect i mean honestly this outfit i don't really know the outfit but this is a like uh, jeans this is a shot for the politics jeans are. so shout out sneaker politics of course we use your yeah. stock photo uh please don't sue us the jeans here great yeah, yeah. fair we're use making, i don't know yeah yeah. So we're not making money. Right. <laughs> Lord right. knows we're not. Lord knows we're not. Which is, uh, listener, that's why we need you to hit that subscribe button right now. Okay, look at that subscriber count. We need we need every one of you. Come on. So uh, thank you for everyone who responded to the poll. Sorry we can't, you know, shoot everyone's answer here on the air, but just want to give shout outs to a couple of our favorites here. Moving on, we wanted to talk about, again, as we said at the top of the episode, in July mm-hmm. of this year, we sat down together and predicted what we thought at the end of the year or just so far based on what had released, what were our top three candidates for sneaker of the year so far? Do you want to go first and talk about what your three choices were at that time? And how do you think they've held up and aged without obviously giving away too much or too little here? Uh, yeah. So I think clean shoes, great shoes. I mean, not, I guess too kind of like out there. I mean, obviously having like some dunks, uh, especially like the dunk low in their biggins. Sorry to interrupt you here for the audio only listeners. Can you, which shame on y'all if you're not watching, but First if you're off, driving, I understand. Don't look at your phone. Uh, but for, go. but for those people, can you recap what your three choices were? Easy, easy. So uh, third place got the, uh, the dunk low, the uh, black suede, black suede. Yep. I messed up the graphic here. I got, you know, I took, I took hey. my beating for it halfway through the year. But I did not take the time to remake the graphic at the end of the year. So that's why you're like, why is it in the middle if it's third place? Yeah. Sorry. Sorry. Uh, second place, another dunk low with the rainbow trout. Mm-hmm. Um, and then my first place is the bodega New Balance 610, the trail less taken. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, I've been hitting a lot as many times as I can talk about um, that bodega New Balance. Mm-hmm. So not a, a shock there. Uh, and then obviously having the two dunks, I'm more of a dunk fan than an SB dunk fan. So mm-hmm. that also trends classic looking shoes, clean looking shoes. Um, you know, the black suede a little bit more quieter. Mm-hmm. Going to go with a little bit more. We got the rainbow trout. That's going to be a little bit more loud for you with some cool little hits. And then trail us taken, which a little bit more, probably something that I, uh, I didn't really realize how much I really would enjoy it it is yeah. a little bit more outside of what i typically would be drawn to in sneakers mm-hmm. but i mean just seeing it, it honestly you know it really could be hmm. is seeing all the product shots the product shots yeah they like, styled it great. That, they were so good so it, it you know it could be that yeah um but i think you know i think a solid top three i was very happy with this mm-hmm. um mid-year and i still i still think that this is a is a solid grouping yeah for sure um of shoes um even at the end mm-hmm. of 2023 okay respect yeah i would say so i mean i think the dunk low black suede is probably the only one that i think on that list that a lot of people would be like remind me what that one is you know because sure. like i think probably i think probably since it came and went hasn't been talked about too i mean i think 
probably all three of your picks have been talked about maybe as much as we both think they should have. Um, Definitely. But yeah, I mean, and this is probably, correct me if I'm wrong, probably one of the first years that you put a new balance this high up on your list. I would say so. I think we admittedly tend to be pretty heavily Nike boys. So to see a new balance, not only at that point on your list, but at the top of your list was a bit shocking. Yeah. I know not only a new bounce, but again, just kind of the style and the, and the look of it, the model, um, but it was good. Okay. It was good. Yeah. I'm not mad at it now. I wasn't mad at it then. There you go. What about you looking back halfway? How's your, how does your mid 2023 list stack up? What yeah. So just a quick recap for everyone. My third place was the air max One Eighty Six big bubble. My second place was the Nike airship every game, which you want to talk about shoes that had a grip on me. There was a two month window there. Uh, and then this is probably the saddest news. This is me eating crow at this point. Mm-hmm. I think they call it what I wanted first place to be was uh, Stephen Harrington. The artist was going to do a collaboration with leaning called this palm tree, copper patina, like one of their basketball silhouettes where it was supposed to be like, you know, wear away on the uppers. And it had like a copper underneath it. And he teased it. He teased it in the first six months of the year. If we were talking about it, the halfway point yeah. and said coming yeah. soon. And here we are. Well, what I would say seven months later, not, not a, not a peep, not a whisper other than me yeah. going back to that yeah. post every so many weeks and saying, Steven question mark. And he likes it. And I'm just like, Steven, nope. what does that mean? Uh, so hey. maybe we'll clip this and I'll, and I'll post it and tag him in it. Steven, I'm, I'm still so badly waiting for this shoe. And I want to say if it had come out, it probably would be, all my sneakers of the year list. So please tell us anything. Thank you. Um, but yeah, you know, feeling about it. I mean, I think the air max one holds up. I don't think it was on many people's top 10 list. Cause I think it, it didn't have in general, the air max didn't have as big of a year as I think Nike was kind of hoping and wishing it would be. Um, the airship every game I have admittedly cooled down from. And I think at the time I was admittedly, like just a little overhyped on it. Not that it's a bad Mm -hmm. shoe, not that I was giving it more than it deserved, but I think just, you know, that was, that was what I wanted just like more than any other shoe for probably a two month period there. But then I think we talked about it on the last episode of the one before that once the Amamanir five Dawns came out and I was like, Oh, white and light blue shoe kind of liking this more anyway. So now, now I do not have a desire for it. And then I already gave my whole spiel on, the Steve Harrington leanings, which I was also excited to put not only a non Nike, but a leaning at the top of my list there. I you mean, know? yeah, yeah, I, I would, I would agree. I think this list for the two of us, our number ones were way different yeah. than um, what we would typically would pick. I mean, obviously you see our two and three is Nike. So we mm-hmm. are still <laughs> severely. We're still, we're still Nike boys. Nike. Yeah. 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 Um, so, but I would say how you felt about the, the everyday, uh, those airships, it, it was me with new balance is me. Yeah. With new balance. Yeah. You know, it's one of those things where I'm just like, boy, it is. Um, and, and I do the think it, it has been, yeah, it has been, I just don't, I haven't had a maybe bigger hyper replacement for the new bounce. Like I yeah. think like how you said with the, the airships and then those am um, and years, um, coming yeah. in. So, um, but yeah, good list. I I still I still think I still hold with. I would I, say both of our top threes. Well, I got. You would look at it if you had it. You'd be like, okay. Well, I got a fold. I got a fold. Yeah, I got a fold on the leanings because they did not come out. Yeah, but uh, that's true. The that's other true. two, I but still I think stand by. Both would still look at it. Oh people yeah, would still look at it and be like, okay, that's that's cool looking. Yeah, I like the look of it. I like what they're yeah, doing. I really. Hope, I just want it. I really <laughs> I hope just, those come out. Yeah, I'm still. I just want it to be a thing. I still really hope those come out. Yeah. That being said, let's go ahead and talk about now getting into our sneakers of 2023, our top three. We're each going to give our top three in an honorable mention. But just so y'all can kind of understand before we give our picks here, why did we pick these? uh, The disclaimer that I think we give or should be giving every year is that you and I will each give a list. Mm -hmm. And we obviously don't have to agree in a line because we're not coming up with one list together. And a lot of years in the past when we weren't a video podcast and we weren't making, you know, visuals and everything to go along with it, we would not know each other's list this year. We do know each other's list, but yeah. Um, so for you, when you were putting your list together, what were, 
I guess, as it says, your thought process and criteria. What were you really looking for and considering as a sneaker of the year? So I tried to find a balance. Usually my my criteria is that balance between what I think is hype Mm -hmm. and what the internet thinks is hype. Mm -hmm. So while it is my list, I do want to have some verification of being like, yes, I think this is great. Other people would also think this is great. Okay. Um, I do typically try to, I may also look harsher on more of those bigger names Mm. that had the big, that had the hype and try to, okay. Look at what I think deserves Mm -hmm. some recognition. Yeah. Now, with the way that we do the episode with obviously now we're doing our top three of the year. And then we have our other categories. It has gotten to where it's like, okay, I can give this recognition. I can give the shout out to this mm, other shoe yeah. that may not. Um, it kind of has come throughout the years where it does seem like both me and you will look at a extremely popular shoe and kind of look at it. Like, I don't really understand necessarily. Yeah. I think if you strip away its limited production, if you strip away the name that's attached to it, mm-hmm. would this still get it? And sometimes I, I kind of look at that. So there may be times where I do look at a, a extremely hype shoe, but I have to look at it in the sense of like, okay, if it didn't have this on the, on the heel, if it didn't have this name, yeah. would it still be, would it still be great? And sometimes I go, yeah, I think that's, yeah, yeah. That's still great. We've said that about a Travis Scott before. We've said that about off white before, mm-hmm. um, where this is just a great shoe in general. So that's, that's my main criteria when I am, yeah. when I'm looking at it. Um, and, but with just you, the, what, well, I was gonna, before we get to me, just to kind of like piggyback off that for a second, like, I think, yeah, kind of if, if I'm hearing you correctly and the way I think about it is that like, Travis Scott and this we're just playing examples here at random. Yeah. Travis Scott right and now. Jordan or Travis Scott and Nike, however you want to phrase it, for how yeah. many collaborations they've already done together and sort of the inherent mass hysteria that's going to come of putting those two names together when they introduce another collaboration it better really come with like some importance of like why we're doing this rather than like it's the same thing but a different colorway versus like Mm -hmm. j tips and saucony both kind of like i would say you know not the most dominant names in their industries but when they come with something and it has the success that it does like i think that gets more credit for me than like we took the the travis scott jordan one low and instead of brown we did green this time you know it's just like Regardless of how the general public or the sneaker culture, whatever perceived and like whatever the resale value is on either, I think one of those obviously deserves more credit than the other for making the impact it did. Yes. No, I, I think you, you definitely hit that. And I always end up going back. You'd said it a couple of years ago and I, I can always remember just I, a vague I stole it. of I stole it, but yeah. the, yes, um, it is a you. And when you said it the first time, you did properly quote it. So, but it's yeah. out there. Um, of you know, in in the lines of if we're excited about a shoe that came out thirty years ago, and it's still like, what does that really say about sneakers? And it's right. like, yeah, don't get me wrong, the Chicago one will always be it's always top good. three right sneaker, but. If we are at a point where in 2023, it's still the number one, I'm like, yeah, is no one else doing it? Like, can no one else beat what happened sure. in 1984? Yeah. Like, you know? Right. Yeah. Um, so I usually will think about that as well, which which sometimes does take out a retro. Yeah. Yeah. I get, you that. know, um, and, and sometimes I have to take out my own, like whenever, like before I started my collection and I was you know, on these forums, looking at shoes and things like that and being like, oh my God, I, 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 I want to ha- at one point have this shoe. And then it eventually gets re-released just because that shoe came out this year and I was able mm-hmm. to get it. It 
I have to take my sentimental value out of it. Yeah. And just be like, yeah, it was great back then. It's great now. But let me right. look at what's something new. Right. Or a different take or whatever it may be. Yeah. If they if they dropped the bread Jordan one in in the OG shape and the OG leather and the OG colors every year, how many years in a row would we give it sneaker of the year? You know? Yeah. Because the shoe's the same. It's just how long until we get tired of it. Is it no longer sneaker of the year? That's my thing. So yeah, yeah, that's that's a good segue, I think, uh, for my thought process and criteria. As as you've alluded to, and as listeners might know, I have a self imposed no retros, no reimagined retros rule mm-hmm. on my own list. Uh, and so we don't normally do spoilers, but here's your spoiler alert. <laughs> There's no white cement three reimagined on my list. Again, because I really try to look at things that were new or happened for the first time this year, or just like things that were really big, which I know the white cement three reimagined was really big, but I'm just, yeah, it's to that point. I think it's, um, I think I attribute the quote to Brendan Dunn from complex who was talking about one year, you know, the Jordan one and yeah, how sad if the best shoe of the year is something that originally released 40 years ago and they just brought back and it's like, yeah. They could do that every year, you know, and they kind of yeah, exactly. do do that every yeah, year. So, yeah, yeah. um, so yeah, I, I try to stay away from retros or reimagine retros. And then after that, I try to do a balance of what do I think this year will be remembered for and what did I personally enjoy? And that's kind of always the tug, right? Cause like, obviously each of us are giving our own personal sneakers of the year, right? We're not trying to say mm-hmm. definitively, here's what 2023 will and should be remembered for it's just to us kind of what did we think the best was but still i want to bring a little bit of that if we looked back in five years at our list that we did this year would we go oh that's right that was that big thing from that year ago oh man i totally forgot about that you know yeah so all all things that we try to consider pool together yeah that being said i think you have the honors if you want to kick us off with your honorable mention for longtime listeners of the show we will each have one honorable mention here the whole last episode is our sneaky way of doing six (laughs) honorable mentions but this show it's only one honorable mention yeah um honestly i think whenever i i ended up putting this shoe at honorable mention i might i might have put it here as as a spiteful thing for (laughs) for what i keep hearing on the internet whenever you hear those those sound bitey things of people going around like a sneaker convention or complex con or whatever. And like, yeah. what's the worst sneaker to ever come out? And this sneaker gets out and I'm going, you're just wrong. Okay. You just have a, you're just wrong. Right. And that is the tongue low Panda. Yeah. It is the Panda. So like them, hate them, love them, mm-hmm. whatever. You cannot deny the moment that these bad boys had it it literally went from people looking at it and being like, I am shutting everything down to get this Yeah, because they're the people are going to want this. Yeah. And they were not wrong. Mm -hmm. They were not wrong. I mean, the resell on these bad boys when they first dropped was insane. The people trying to get these to bot these, it was crazy. And you look at the shoe and you go, really? Yeah. But again, that's what it was. Mm -hmm. And then Nike said, Oh, sick. How about a million more? Yeah. Um, and I and I appreciate Nike for doing that because there's so many times where we go, hey Nike, why don't you just make right. more? Right. So they said, I'll go ahead and I'll make more. Bet. And then we'll for do some it. reason, yep. people then once they became readily available, now all of a sudden it's a terrible sneaker. Yeah, that's the that's the tough thing with sneakerheads in general, is a lot of time when you miss out on something, you're like, I wish they just make more. And you're like, so yeah. you wish everyone would have them? And they're like, No, like I wish they would make one more pair like i yeah, i just I, need a pair but i don't yeah i think yeah i think so often people kind of get stuck in that trap of like i want to be part of the exclusivity i don't want necessarily a ton of inclusivity i just want to be yeah. part of the exclusivity yeah i want uh i think like you said it's not necessarily i wish they made more it was just i wish i was one of the people who got it yeah um and so I, I put this as an honorable mention. One of it's a clean shoe. I mean, it's black and white. There's nothing crazy about it. They didn't go over right over the board. It's not overly hype. There's no 
crazy uniqueness that they did with this. There's no big name attached to it. Yeah. They did multiple variations of the Panda. A high, the, I mean, crazy going at it. Um, I looked at it and said to me, when you would think of 2023 and sneakers, I have a feeling that people would be like the Panda, like craze yeah i think would be one thing they'd be like oh do you remember when people were losing their mind over this and then also losing their mind over this yeah for two starkly different reasons um but i think more more than anything it is a spiteful placing <laughs> which is why i think it fits very nicely in honorable mention it's very you is to really just look at people and say it's a good shoe it's not the worst shoe it's not the best shoe but it's a good shoe he stands behind it yeah, I think my only counterpoint would be I and this this just goes to show how quick things are moving in sneakers right now. I feel like didn't the panda wave start last year, not necessarily this year. I know this year was a big year for like Possibly. churning them out in quantity, so yeah. But I don't your, know if it will, your list, your criteria. Yeah. I definitely remember the the 2023 panda pandemonium. Pandemonium. There you go. So I'm going to add a, I'm going to add the badumpsh in post. I'll add that in post right there. Appreciate you. Appreciate you. All right. I, uh, you know, it's honorable mention. You can't be too mad at it. I think Eh, there you go. Yeah. Like I said, it's more spiteful (laughs) and I am, I am admitting (laughs) he's forthcoming at least. Yeah. We appreciate that. There you go. All right. So as for me, then my honorable mention, uh, and this is something that I feel like you where it's like, I didn't put it in here for spite. But I'll be the first mm-hmm. to tell you, I don't really like this, but it's just okay. you want to talk about things that had a moment in sneakers this year. And that's obviously top of the mind. Got to be oh, yeah. the mischief. Big red boot. The boot's so big that I had to put it in front of the honorable mention ribbon there. It was so tall. Um, yeah, we talked about it. I, I keep saying we talked about it in our last episode, but we did. We talked about a lot of these. That's the way it goes. Uh, I, and I know it's technically not a sneaker, but I think. Like I was saying, earlier, if we looked back in five years and tried to remember and recollect one moment, like what were the big trends? What were the big moments that happened in 2023? Big red boot is like the moment that happened in 2023 that like just dominated social media for the month of March. And it happened so early in the year, right? That I've been listening to a lot of people talk about their sneaker of the year. And whenever they bring up the big red boot, everyone goes, that happened this year. And it did. It happened in March. But yeah. The way that like it was the shoe in March and, you know, not a sneaker, of course. And I think it had so much novelty, obviously, and like it wasn't practical to really be wearing regularly that it didn't have staying power. Right. It was a flash in the pan. It was I got to get a pair to get a funny fit off for uh, social yeah. media. And then like that'll be it. It's the one and done for sure, um, which is which is very much mischief. Yeah, yeah, for sure. That's their whole thing is not necessarily making like inline everyday wearable sort of shoes. Yeah, it it does almost feel like mischief is what like what was Supreme. Mm, Okay, like I feel like Supreme would do that. Supreme would almost have like that very like ironic. Yeah, I'm going to sell you quite literally a a pinball machine or a brick. Yeah. a crowbar, yeah. a fire extinguisher, like all these very crazy things that for some reason, I mean, people would line up yeah. for and pay way, way more than what you should do for a book yeah. of matches. But just because, you know, so it's, it's almost like super, uh, mischief now is supreme back in like the early 2000s. Hmm, of that's an interesting take. What kind of wild thing can we do just to yeah. to make a, 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 a stir on social media? I think probably um, the only difference I would draw there is that I think supreme uh, mischief's customer is in on the joke and i don't think supreme's <laughs> customer always knows that they are the joke you know are the joke yeah right yeah. when you buy a pair of shoes that are called like gob stompers and they wear away to different layers and they're now collaborating yeah. with dremel to do it you're like i see what they're doing i get it oh, sometimes you God. buy the supreme mac and cheese the craft mac and cheese because you're like this is going to shoot up in price and then it doesn't <laughs> and you're like well like do I eat it? Like you're right. You know, you're just like, I don't know if I actually am having fun anymore. I have this now. Yeah. So yeah, I would, that's why I wanted, I really wanted to put it on honorable mention. I don't want to put it in my top three, but I think we'd be remiss if you went the whole year and you didn't give credit and acknowledgement to 
what really was the biggest moment of the year, at least at the beginning, the first biggest moment, you know? Yeah. That being said, enough of the mentionables. You want to go ahead and start mm. awarding the podiums here? My bronzy. Um, my again, bronzy. Guess, my bronzy. Not not a within the realm, but I guess a little bit outer of the realm. Mm-hmm. Um, I ended up doing the uh, Nike Lunar Rome that Alabaster. First colorway. Um, so, and what a colorway did they mm-hmm. come out with? I mean, oh my goodness and yes this is definitely more of like that athletic wear um so definitely going to be more of more of like a runner shoe a workout shoe but from what this colorway has i do think that it can definitely have some staying power mm. this colorway has me excited i would love to see it i know it's not 2016 2017 maybe even 2018 where we had more of those like athletic casual fits, leisure wear but I do believe that we are coming into, I think next year we may have a rebirth. I know Mm. that especially in for sure within like the women fashion, Mm -hmm. I've seen a couple things of like a solid Nike, like crew neck Mm. um, sweater with a matching like set with like the sweatpants. Um, And, but I've seen people do with like the very like neutral new balance. I have a feeling possibly that the uh lunar rome could possibly take in on that okay um maybe also could could go into you know uh at the end of this year was going into looking into having some adding some um running shoes Mm -hmm. uh, to try and get in shape going in you know building a home gym um so these were on my radar bit more than i think other people's yeah i would definitely understand people see this shoe and be like i didn't even know this this was a thing came out yeah yeah um so i think that it being number three is why i have it at number three is okay. um i was really into this um i really love the uh the sole that they have on the shoe um mm-hmm. it's got a lot of great performance reviews uh and honestly just that that colorway um the different mesh with it, how the, you know, everything, all the lines move within the shoe is just really beautiful for me. Mm. Uh, and that I think this is also one of those is kind of more of that, like quiet heat. Mm, so I kind of okay. like that of adding, I like having a good balance now within my collection of, I want to throw some, I want to have a nice outfit together, but I don't necessarily want to wear um, those shoes that aren't beaters yet and yeah. things like that. So I could wear this that has, I feel more comfortable wearing this yeah. in less, you know, favorable conditions because it is mm. more. I Might see it a little more messy. as a, yeah, I see it as more of a more of like a performance shoe rather than right. like a stylish sneaker. Okay, so okay, that's what I had in my as as my bronzy. Okay, yeah, I think the o- like the the only one thing that I don't like about and it's really tied to this first colorway. I think a little bit different from you is that midsole there because I think for mm. me it looks a little too yellowed. It reminds me of when Travis Scott did the uh, the Air Max 270 React, the uh, yeah, where it had the foam midsole, but it looked like they tried to yellow it, but it just looked like streaky or smudgy. This kind yeah. of gives me that same shade of brownish yellow to where like I just wish it was more of like a sail or an off white color rather than being so yellow. Um, gotcha. I do think it is a good, solid, and clean silhouette. I think it's a bad case mm. of like right shoe wrong time like i think to your point oh, for if sure. this was yeah. if they'd been able to introduce this around the time that like the nmd the ultra boost was just like completely dominating oh this it would have been a good like you know effort against it the vapor max era. yeah yeah but, yeah this would have um, really made it i just feel like in today's day and age i think like it's a good shoe if you're just looking for a good shoe I don't know that it yeah. is the next big thing that Nike might like to hope that it is. Yeah. I don't, and I don't think that's how they're, they're releasing it is to be that like how they did like the vapor max of like, yeah, we want this or the, the Roshi, you know, how yeah. it was like, this is going to be the, this next giant slayer. Mm-hmm. I think it's just one of their introductions in a performance line. Um, and I was like, it pretty, not as a hell. bad one, not a bad one for sure. It pretty as hell. Yeah. A, a late year sleeper that snuck onto your list there you know i would say so yeah definitely okay not a bad one to start your yeah. your third place with your bronzy yeah exactly uh, good 
for my bronzy over here, you know, coming in solid number three. Yeah, we're calling it bronzy now. Deal with it, people. Uh, that for me is going to be the ruckus and New Balance numeric voodoo doll 440. Mm. Probably coming mm. as not much of a surprise to anyone. He's had the poster on his wall here for a month now, and I normally rotate what's right there, but I haven't. Uh, just they killed it. I, I We talked about it a lot in the last episode, and I hate that I keep saying that, but I'm going to keep saying that, that I don't want to, you know, sound like a broken record here. But it again, to me, it's the I keep using him as like the poster child. It's the J-Tip Saucony treatment where it's like, you know, they did a good job because they did it on the 440 and it looks this good. The 440, yeah. you know, not New Balance's most desirable lifestyle. silhouette. Yeah, yeah, it's not on the lifestyle side. It's on the numeric side, which is, I think, kind of like a Nike, Nike SB sort of situation there. Um, mm-hmm. So, like, you don't really see a ton of people wearing 440s casually. If they're wearing New Balance, it's something from the 900 series or like the 2002 R or whatever. Um, so for them to crush it on this silhouette and make it so desirable, I think says everything you need to know about it. Uh, for us being two Louisiana boys who love storytelling, this was a pretty, you know, un unashamedly shills and simps for ruckus here. Uh, this was a pretty easy pun intended shoe in on our list. The only thing that I think made it not go higher on my list is that, you know, while it's a personal favorite of mine i think it's limited nature both in like you know it being a pretty small quantity release and then ruckus Mm -hmm. also being the only shop to release it like the only way that it came out kept this from making bigger waves in the sneaker space you know probably more people you know if they're not already following ruckus might not have got the news of this or even if they were 400 pairs might not have been able to even get their hands on this so yeah that's the that's the only thing that's keeping a little bit lower on my list is that I feel like, unfortunately, you know, shout out New Balance, let the boys make more pairs next time. Uh, Please. More pairs. We just need more pairs, these. But killer shoe, great execution, storytelling, top marks all around. Oh, yeah. No, 100%. Very comfortable. I think this one also, I think like our our third places, the, the commonality that they have is more of like that sleeper heat. Yeah. Um, yeah, for sure. This isn't this this shoe isn't going to be something that I think outside of even just South Louisiana, mm-hmm. you know, um, people will kind of like break their neck too. Mm-hmm. Um, but that's what I like about it. I like yeah. that it has those details and the ones that know know. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and and again, like we said, when I mean we we talked about this shoe to the you know to the ends of the world <laughs> for this, but I I love the. I'm going to take what is probably the most like overbeaten aspect of Louisiana culture, but do it in a way that's like different and not overbeaten. Yeah. And I felt that that was like the coolest part of this yeah. um, is that they were like the whole voodoo theme mm-hmm. within Louisiana is obviously just like so overplayed and so overdone. Yeah. Um, but I thought that they did such a really cool job of doing it in such a unique um, and not overdone way. That's to me, my favorite part of this is you took what is a very cool thing about Louisiana, Mm -hmm. but did it very subtly. And I I was like, perfection. Nailed it. They nailed it on this one. Mm. Can't say enough good things about it. Love it. So more curious than I am to know, what is your second place? I'm curious to know what is your term for your silver? Is it your silver Z? No, it's my sieve. Oh, gotcha. Sorry. How could I have forgot that? Yeah. What's your Honda yeah. Civic? Uh, tell us how you got to that spot. <laughs> How'd you get to that um, spot? So kind of what we, you, you had already said within this, this episode is sometimes when you get a collaboration, okay, it gets to a point where it's like, okay, you're just doing kind of the same thing, but a different colorway, or it's kind of like, you're at a point where you're like, okay, it's just, okay, this is the next thing that you're mm-hmm. doing. And you're, you're kind of just, I don't know, getting bored with milking it. it, You might say exactly. But with my civvy. Okay. (laughs) That I'm on in year five. (laughs) But when he said sun is down, freezing cold and it's the Travis Scott and he came. No. Yeah. (laughs) Of. It is what they're, they're at a point right now where it literally is. I, I had said, I think, you know, in the episode before this one, it is just like, I'm like, man, this is great. And then you yeah. get the next one. You're like, holy cow, that yeah. one was good. And you're like, I don't like this one as much as the other ones, but gosh, dang, this one's still yeah. good. Yeah. 
Um, and then with the fives, again, seeing the the uh, the dust colorway, this this black colorway come out mm-hmm. and being like, wow, this is really great. I absolutely love it. I love the the little detail. Again, we were crushed over the mesh, and then they came yeah. out with the dawn colorway. Yeah. And you look at both of those, and again, I think when you have a pack like that, what what speaks the volume to me is literally like I could blind bag that shoe mm-hmm. and be and be like, this is great. Happy either way. I'm not disappointed and things yeah. like that. I, I'm I'm like, I love whichever one. I think this is great. I have a big, big soft spot for the 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 five already. So mm-hmm. I love that this uh I think they did a great job with this. It was a little bit more out of uh the realm of what we're used to. Yeah, they've with kind Amanier, of a, Amanier five from you know or the, like, the Amanier colorway. Yeah, from the three, they did the one, the two, the twelves, and the four all very much stayed in that same colorway of like the uppers mainly going to be white. And then the accent's going to be like this Bordeaux, except, you know, I think the 12 yeah. was the first time they flipped it and they was like, no, it's going to be a lot of black. So yeah, this one, mm-hmm. but then especially the Dawn colorway of like bringing in the blue, you know? Yeah. You can tell no. how impressed we are by the materials, right? When we go, but when they switched the bow for the blue and then they were like, oh. but then Travis Scott switched the brow for the green. Yeah. It's but- hard to explain, but like, trust me, it's different. <laughs> Again, my my comparison really what made people think was or what made it clear for me is how we did feel with the, the um the Yeezy the three fifty V two. So like at at, at mm. some point we were eventually just like okay, it's just a it's the same thing but just a different shape. Yeah. Um, I do think at some point we we may get there with Travis Cup. That's a whole different episode. Yeah. Um. So honestly, w- when looking at the second. I looked at what Amon Manier has done so far, just in general as a whole, and how they're just doing a great job. The story that they're telling, the mm-hmm. the passion um, behind the sneakers and why they're doing it, I really love. Um, the upscale, you know, feel and quality that they do with them is great. Um, I have a soft spot for the five, so that made it easy. And then again, when you have a pack, the the difficulty. And I know it's only two, but the difficulty comes where you're like, well, this one's great. I, I guess it's cool that you did another one, but yeah. this one is the, the one I, my personal feeling with the two different colorways is they are both just smash hits. Mm. So that's why that made to me, it be on the number two is mm-hmm. that you made two. You couldn't go wrong. Bangers. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Before we move on, quick question for you. Cause I think if you're like me, your love for the Jordan line of sneakers, right? The silhouettes goes from like the one to the five, the one to the six, maybe. And then after mm-hmm. there, the interest really drops off. So understandably yeah. now I'm, I'm near having done the one to the five and then the 12. Do you think that if they continue and keep doing more Jordans, your interest will drop off? Or do you think I'm, I'm near might be the collaborator that gets you super into the Jordan eight? Well, so I, with the, I do have a pair of sixes. Yeah. But they are definitely more. I mean, it they look and feel more perform. I think like the six, the seven, and the eight. Mm-hmm. Maybe six and seven for sure look yeah. and feel more performancy. The eights, I do like the eights. Mm-hmm. Really, the there's only I don't know how many colorways there are, but I, I do think the way that Amamanier does, I think that I would at least be like, this I think you did great. Okay. Now the nines and the tens, mm-hmm. I'm not super big on. Yeah, I've already talked about how I love the elevens, but you wish you could be like I would look. Guy. Like, yeah. <laughs> I wish I could. Really, it's it's the nines and the ten. I might be like, okay, that's going to be my testing ground. Really, yeah. When, it, when the nine and ten, and anything honestly post the eleven, yeah, is yeah. going to be where it may get. We well, may see. So time yeah. time will tell. We'll see. But. Those are the the ones that I think, but yeah, so far right now with the, with the, uh, the silhouettes they've done in Jordan brand, it's just yeah. been, like I said, I mean, honestly, when the twos came out, um, I said it on, you know, I screwed in front of the mountain. There's probably six people who enjoy the twos, but I, I'm a Manier came out with the two. And I think everyone was like, mm, okay, this is actually, I don't know. This is mm. that. And, um, man, which twos did you end up picking up? I well, I got the Amam and Year twos, the Union twos. You're thinking of though, yeah. The they, Union those twos, are also, yeah. yeah. Also, um, I, pretty good. I feel like the the Amam and Year ones were divisive, right? Because the one a silhouette that everyone mm-hmm. loves, mm-hmm. but the mm-hmm. approach they took on it, 
like the ones and the twos are my least favorite of anything they've done. Yeah. I, I just, I really didn't. Like I think three is ever, I think, yeah. I think three is everybody. Three is so. going to be at the top of probably. But I mean, you list, put, yeah. I mean, the threes, the fours, the fives. Ooh, You're done. Bangers. Shut it down. Shut it down. Bangers. All right. We're going to keep right. moving here. Dust it off and tell them, uh, you know, throw a deuce, deuce. My Civ, my Honda Accord. There you go. Uh, what you my, riding on? My Honda Accord here, and, and this is one I really went back and forth for a minute of kind of between two different choices. Uh, but what I ultimately landed on here was the Kith Marvel and wow. Asics Capsule Collection. Uh, these were, if you remember, these came out uh, later in the year. It was after mm-hmm. our July episode because we didn't have them then. So in the second half of the year, um, but they did all these blind bag boxes to where when you bought the shoes, you didn't know which pair of shoes you were getting. And if I remember correctly, there were six or seven different colorways. Uh, a better mm-hmm. researcher would have that number in front of him. But I, oh, well, oh, well, six or seven. That's close enough. Uh, all yeah. obviously inspired by, you know, um, Marvel and X-Men and you got the shoes, you got a trading card that came with it, which was already graded. graded. So if you wanted to go ahead and resell it real quick, thank you. Make it quick on us. And the box opened up like the display boxes that have the trading cards in like a retail store Mm. would have. So just like killer execution. This was one for me where the packaging and the story was so much better than I think the shoes themselves. Personally, like I think the shoes were good, but I don't okay, think yeah, anyone was going crazy about the shoes. Like I don't see anyone still posting about the shoes. I think the pandemonium was really the blind bag aspect, and yeah. they they the story was so much more closely tied to X Men trading cards rather than like X Men. You know, like they mm-hmm. were inspired by characters from X Men, but the whole thing, the whole gimmick behind this release was like you're not sure which pairs you could get. I think Kith set up like a discord or an email list where you could email which pair you got and which pair you were looking for. And they would try to connect you with someone who might be a good match for you. That's Just cool. like, that's cool. Yeah. So that was a cool aspect of the release. I, I think Ronnie posted about that. I'm first name. Like I know I'm Ronnie Feig posted about that <laughs> on his Instagram that it was either like Ronnie through their, Pumps. right. Yeah. Either through their Instagram or like email, they were trying to connect people that were looking for different pairs. Um, that's cool. And so, again, I, I've said this a lot of times, while I thought that was such a cool concept, I am not a blind bag guy, right? Because there were mm-hmm. too many from this release that if I got them, I would be like, mm, I don't really think I'm going to wear those. Um, <laughs> the odds weren't as good on this one for me for what I liked. And so yeah. I didn't want to participate in it, but I still think it was a cool concept, a cool idea. And the shoes look good enough. You know, I think... Um, you know, Kith has a long history of working on the gel light three. Had they maybe done this on, you know, like one of the popular a six silhouettes for this year, like the gel Kayano or like some of the mm-hmm. other, like the tech runners, you might've even seen cool. it go like another level there, even though for me, it would probably personally go lower on my list. Um, but that's how these ended up here. The shoe that I went back and forth with for this number two spot was also from Kith the Adidas and Clark collaboration they did earlier this year. Mm, Those are, yeah. But for me, what it came down to was like, I feel like those are more, this is where I get like nerdy and bookkeepery, but like, I feel like those are more of an important moment of like Adidas and Clark's working together. And like, you know, for the Samba having as big of a year that it, that it had this year. And I think Kith is really the only person that like gets those two brands to handshake and do a whole mm-hmm. new silhouette together. Like I, I think a whole new silhouette of two different sneaker companies working together should be more significant than like new colorways on an already existing ASICs. But I think the public reception of the ASICs and personally, if I had to wear one, I would rather wear the ASICs. That's what kind of gave it that edge into my number two spot for me and why the uh, Adidas and Clarks didn't make it onto my list. But I did a lot of walks with my dogs where I did a lot of self contemplation of like, Oh, which one is it going to be? I don't really, really have to think about it. And that's how we all got over. here. Yeah. You're telling me. I, I think very good point in the sense of the way you got the shoe and how they were packaged was way more interesting than the actual shoes. Yeah. Which is 
weird to say considering it is like a number two but i think that's fair because i remember when we had talked about these that was kind of the biggest thing that i was talking about i was like this is a way to add i think a real good like breath of fresh air and Mm -hmm. some excitement and something new to sneakers Mm -hmm. um you know in a way that like oh it's a it's a it's a blind bag you don't know which color way you're getting and then also like you know okay you may not get the color way that you want but maybe you got the super high like highly rated card card of you know of it you know things like that so um but i do i do think the thing that holds this back is kind of what you said of why it held it back for you is i don't think there's as many people who enjoy blind bags yeah um whereas like me and my wife love a blind bag like we're gonna do a quick we're gonna do a quick tangent here anytime myself and my wife are hanging out with you and your wife and we go to a target run you stop us at the register and you go everyone pick one and it's not a you can't opt out and be like man you really i don't want you to waste your money on me i'm not really gonna and you're like yeah everyone pick one so yeah i know that about it oh yeah like it's just it, they're they're so fun and yeah it, usually if i'm on a big run i'm like yeah i'm I'm buying i'm buying this overpriced keychain blind bag for everybody right. because i want everyone to do it yeah um and that may go back to you know growing up where you know pokemon cards and Yu-Gi-Oh right. cards right. and all that was was a big thing but um i think i was i was surprised to see this on your list just because i remember when we were talking about this it i seen it seemed like i was more excited about this you than, definitely were and you were it's, it's weird for me to put a shoe so high on my list that i'm like i think that was a great shoe i absolutely did not want to buy a pair right you know like i get <laughs> i get that it's a bit hypocritical but that's that's also where my balance of what do i think what's big in this year and when we look back i'll be like yeah. that was a big moment so for me like you mm-hmm. know everyone scrambling for these pairs and like watching people unbox them which i don't watch a lot of you know like I'm going to do like, uh, what do they do it when they, when they, is it called like pulling packs when people open packs of cards on the air? Yeah. I forget what the actual, yeah. but like people Pack opening, pack, openings. Like, yeah. Like I watch people, um, unbox shoes, obviously, but like, mm-hmm. I know what shoes they've got. I don't watch a lot yeah. of like blind breaks. I think is in like another term for it there. Um, gotcha. but with this, it was fun to like watch people. There's one YouTuber shout out, uh, Sean go who runs an incredible channel who bought three pairs of these. And all three got the same like Cyclops, not the, not the super rare Cyclops, the, like oh. the lesser rare Cyclops, all three all were three the same pa- shoe, all three pairs, which for oh, me kind of gave man. me that, like, okay, I don't feel bad that I did not participate in this yeah. release, you know? And, you know, I'm sure he was a bit more of an anomaly than like, I think a lot of people got that one, but to see that someone bought three pairs and could end up with three of the same, I was like, that doesn't make me feel Ooh. terribly great. Um, yeah. So, yeah, I didn't want to participate because I very wholeheartedly thought I would be so excited when these came in and I opened them. And I think the dopamine would like sharply drop off of like when they're not the pair that you wanted or even if they were, you know, like it, this is the this pair right here is the one that I wanted the most. It's the most rare pair, though. So it's like odds I'm of getting it, low. There were other pairs that like I would wear, but none of them were like I want to wear them. Here's a good segue as much as my number one. So it's yeah. like for me to spend the money and then get them and be like, well, opening it is more exciting than wearing them. Then it's like, mm, yeah, that's fair. Good yeah. point. I don't think that's a lot of people's yeah. thought of it, but these were great. I love mm-hmm. this whole thing. It was yeah, just something new, something exciting. Exactly. Let, to the no retros point, that's why I'm going to give some credit there. We did something Ooh. new, whether or not it was for me or not. I like a new concept. Yeah. There All right. you go. So you got your bronzy, you got your sieve, uh-huh. and this is yeah. Uh, I'm gonna call this one my goose. Goose. I was gonna go Goldilocks, but I like goose. Uh, golden goose. The golden. <laughs> the meme. <laughs> I'm like the handshake. <laughs> there it is. There you go. All right. Um, I call it recency bias. <laughs> Call it what you want, but my boy is t- buying a trip to New York just so I could go into a bodega, <laughs> rocking some New Balance Six Tens. The trail less taken. Yep. Honestly, yes. Again, I I think this is this one is is so far from what I would normally end up putting. Yeah. Um. With with it being a New Balance, I know 
throughout the, you know, at least two, three years, we have been talking about how there is definitely these, these in the shadow brands, mm-hmm. which does sound like a, a, a kind of a dig at them. Cause they are not, they are big brands such They're, as like new balance and yeah, Asics and all yeah. of those things. Um, but however it, you know, yes, in the, between the two colossal Titans of Adidas mm-hmm. and Nike, um, you know, but new balance I think has slowly and very quietly been, Oh, absolutely. Um, putting together very solid, not only collabs, but just really, really great colorways. And this is one of them where I was like, I just saw it and I was like, man, the, the colors and, and the, the hints of the, the purple to, mm-hmm. contra, you know, contrast it. Um, it is a very more like hiking shoe and it feels more outdoorsy, um, which is not me anymore. Um, <laughs> Shout out those of us who come from very flat lands. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, you know, it has everything that I, I feel like I wouldn't be attracted to. Mm-hmm. And I am somehow it is, I mean, we are just, I'm pulled to this shoe. Yeah. Uh, every time I look at it, I just, I'm just like, man, this is a, I just kind of just stop. And I just look at it. Every time it comes across the page, I just look at it. I'm like, dang, that's a good one. It's a good look. Shoe. Um, I think I, I will. Um, I, I this is going to be um, probably the first pickup that I do end up getting within the new year. Mm. Um, for sure, I think that um, once them uh, once once those taxes hit, I've got a little bit more return think, breathing through. room. Yeah. I don't think these are these are crazy expensive. No, I, I haven't looked at the resale. But I, I think, think they're very cheap. I think that's the good Not thing cheap, about but, like you didn't jump to buy these at retail. You might even get them below retail. You know. Yeah. So. Um, so I, I very excited about that. Like I said, they're just a clean looking shoe. They're a beautiful shoe. Um, I haven't had the opportunity to see these in person, but kind of how I, uh, when we were looking at our um, retrospective from mid year, mm-hmm. uh, the, the press shots for these were just, I think mm-hmm. fantastically done. They were great. Um, so it was nice to, to look, you know, cause I, I tried not to look at like the, what I thought in July. So it didn't necessarily mm. influence my end of the year. Okay. Um, so to see that my, what I thought would be my best shoe of 2023 ended up still being, um, my best shoe of 2023, I thought was, was, was pretty cool. Um, taste did not change within six there you months. Go. Yeah. So that's um, what I want to talk about. There's, Nothing that came out the second half of the year that to you was so good that it dethroned this. I just, like I said, I think it just, every time I would look at this shoe, I would just kept, it was, it, it almost had the, the same effect of the, um, the Harachi runner yep. that I ended up picking up. Yeah. Um, uh, I remember seeing those in pictures and was like, dang, that is great. Then I ended up that one day we saw it in ruckus. I picked yeah. it up. I said, wow, these look great in person. And it, like, I, that is my everyday shoe that mm-hmm. I wear at work. And I will look down and I go, Holy cow, those things look pretty on my feet. And I and I, I have the same feeling that I would have for these um, yeah. new balances. Which on the Hirachi runners, you know, you sold me on them. I would have got a pair today. I texted you. I was at yeah. the Nike store. <laughs> they had a pair on the outlet wall uh at like 70 bucks or something like that. But Crazy half a size too small for me. So just yeah. and they are make it work. I mean, yeah. It would not have been fun. Yeah, no. Have. I didn't even bother to try them on because I'm like, no. I gotta go true to size at least on these, if not up. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I think a lot of people would see this and be like, I mean, it's a cool looking shoe, it's a good shoe. A number one, I, I don't think that people obviously I don't think a lot of people would put this at their number one. Yeah. Heck, I, I'm sure if if you looked at all the major um kind of like media places this probably isn't even in anyone's top probably not no. um but it's my list baby <laughs> um and like i said it's just it's like i got a little got a little middle school crush on the shoe i don't know what it is man there's something about me draws yeah i'm just like oh it's i just Ooh. oh man it's so pretty yeah yeah it yeah. is it definitely is a good looking shoot there's something about it as i will agree that like kind of draws me to it but at the same time there's something about it that, like i just can't quite get as enamored as you are with it yeah um i don't know if it's and maybe I, the, see that. I don't know if it's maybe the gray midsole like it's just it feels a little okay. heavy on the dark side but um you know a little darth vader but yeah i don't know it's like i like it because it kind of gives me like hiking shoe you would see at academy but also like hyped version of it you know like it looks like a better version of that but i think you 
are better Charlie. than you. I know you're better than me though. On the, like, you know, elevated dad core, you might call it where it's like, yeah, this yeah. looks like, you know, like it, it's like, you know, almost like the monarch you know where it's like but the monarch kind of became 100%. like its own meme of a thing yeah but it kind of yeah, looks yeah. like you would get the thing off the shelf at dicks and i'd be like wow that looks like something you would find just like sitting on the shelf at dicks and you'd be like yeah it was until undefeated collaborated with it and i'd be like <laughs> damn that's kind of fun you know it's like it's just something about yeah. it gives it that little edge yeah i i do think if it didn't have i i agree with you i think if it didn't have it's less of the the midsole and just how much black paneling yeah just a is little on there dark. specifically towards the heel yeah i think if they had broken that up with some color a maybe added like more that per- exactly yeah just some of that stitching in there or even just a line like a to like mm-hmm. they stack it to break it up i do think that would have that definitely would amp it up i think you saying that yes it does seem like they're there are some aspects of this shoe that seem to get lost because of how much yeah. dark coloring there are in it that I can see. And that I, I would be like, yep, I hear your point, mm-hmm. but you saying this looks like something you would see at Academy, but with a little like sprinkling of hype is the most accurate thing. And as you're <laughs> the saying, best it, he's pulling up stock <laughs> as you, my I've, I've i've now gone from from crush status to stand status he's like ryan what's better than first like wh- how can yeah. i put this at a higher spot yeah <laughs> that's funny so yeah I, I yeah so like i said I, i've been hype on it since then every single chance i get to talk about this shoe i go so long with it because of just how enamored i am with it. yeah it's so pretty it's a good one it's a good one for sure i think like you said a sleeper for sure for yeah. sure so that's my golden goose sitting on the pond elegantly there um all right all right couple couple bowls of porridge gin which bed are you picking yeah okay okay got you okay got you because you baby bears you, yeah yeah because the bears because yeah the whole story because <laughs> <laughs> of remind me how does that one go they huff and they puff and they blew the house down um there's a house. Yeah, there is a house. Uh, man, this was such a tough, a tough struggle for me. And again, not because it felt like there were so many options that I was vying for putting in first place, but more so that like mm-hmm. I felt that this year was a year of so many good sneakers. But in terms of just like if I had to pick one that just like really I felt like for me like dominated the year and I felt like crushed it. I just felt like there were so many different ones that excelled in their own kind of way in different areas, whether it's, you know, like storytelling or packaging or just all around, yeah. like looks good. But one that hit all the marks just felt kind of tough for me this year. I don't know why, but hmm. what I landed on and I'm going to stand by it and I'm going to have to okay. defend myself a little bit here. My sneaker of the year for 2023 is going to be the Nike Air Max 186 <laughs> big bubble. Ooh. But Riot, you say, <laughs> but retros, you say. Here's why it's different. Here's my mental <laughs> gymnastics. Ready? Here's my mental. Stop the episode. And this is this is honestly, I I do I will stand behind it. I think okay. the the whole crux of this shoe, right? The big bubble, the bit of Nike history about like this was supposed to be the original release, but it never happened mm-hmm. because they were so afraid that people were going to see it and be like horrified by it that they were like, we got to do a smaller bubble. I think to me. It's a call it a retro if you want. Right. But it's a retro of a shoe that never really came out. It's not the Air Max one anniversary. Right. Which we have seen before, Mm -hmm. which I probably wouldn't be talking about. But for me, it's the it is a if you want to call it a retro or not, it's the fact that they told the story of the big bubble and is someone that, you know, obviously nerds out about the history of sneakers and about storytelling to see them kind of go back and address it and be like, you know, it's like almost, you would kind of think of it along the same lines of like the band Jordan one, where they put the X on the back of it, where it's like, it's kind of a retro, but they told a story with it rather than like, it's a retro. And the story is that like, it looks like if it was from that time and it looks old. Um, yeah. Yeah. So to me, go ahead. That is what I think that is what does separate it. Yeah. You know, to, to, to kind of go with that of okay well then what about the reimagines and it's like well yeah the jordan like the jordan one reimagined is just like well what if that you found this shoe that no yeah. one was like had got released that was old yeah and the same thing with like the jordan three it's more of just like 
we just kind of aged something that yeah. happened. And yes, I know probably a lot of people Which, was like, okay, well, all they did was take the Air Max one and then just make the bubble bigger. Yeah. However, I agree kind of with you. It it was the 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 story of why the bubble. Um, the story and so, of what actually happened, not like Lost and Found, where it's like the what if story of like what yeah. if had happened. Yeah. So is it, would you say with this shoe, it's more story of the big bubble or the look of a big bubble uh for me it's definitely more story like the shape of these mm -hmm. is definitely different than the shape of like original air maxes but i kind of like it it's yeah. kind of elongated on the toe there and the back is a little bit flatter rather than like kind of that donk they that air max ones mm -hmm. have but also air max ones are like now that i have a pair of these and i look at it next to them like very curved on the front as well like very rounded looking um yeah. So yeah, for me, it's definitely more of the story. It's definitely just like I got so excited for these earlier in the year because I was like, I'm, I'm like sitting at home, right? I watch it, you like that's what it was supposed to be. It, yeah. it was gonna be the biggest bubble. Uh so I don't know. It was like I said, it's at the top of my list, but I'm not here to like throw hands with anyone that disagrees. Again, just because I'm like, it's so high up here for me because of that story, but also just as much, if not more, like. I really like wearing my pair and I really just think it's a good looking shoe, obviously. Um, yeah. So it is a good looking shoe. I know. So I feel bad and hypocritical being like no retros. And it's like, this is pretty arguably a retro. Um, but I think it is, it's a new, I, I hate to even say new take. Cause you'd be like the reimagines are a new take, but it's like, you know, it's yeah. a different shoe in a way, you know, it's got a different it, whole soul on it there and a different shape yeah. on the upper. I would say this is the most on the line or like gray area yeah. of, a, of a shoe yeah. of being like, I, I think, I think it like hearing your argument, someone could be either swayed. I think you could, you could sway either way mm -hmm. of like, yep, no, this is something new. And then be like, well, all they did was just show you more bubble. Right. And then you go, oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah, they didn't really change anything but showing you more bubble. But then also like combating of like, okay, but this was the original plan. Right. This was like that original what they wanted and it wasn't mm -hmm. like a sample that they just made changes for quality. It's like yeah. the whole fear, you know, the a big bubble and would people, right. you know, whatever it may be. Um so I remember seeing this, you know, right right at the uh right before we did it mm -hmm. cuz I, I like you said we had our list. Mhm. Mm and I saw your your number one wasn't there yet. Yeah. I also I also didn't see Big Bubble. Mm. Um, and I was like, interesting. Yeah. And I didn't see Big Bubble on your list at all. This was a um, I think yesterday I just finalized this thing because I I when I tell you I've been wrestling with this for a week now, just trying to be like, what is like the one? And mm -hmm. you know, I just I don't know. It's tough. Like all yeah. three on my list, like the ruckus new balance. I'm like, personally love that one. But also, mm -hmm. like, I'm not going to. I just I just don't think it was huge in the sneaker space. So it's like for me, it's well, really high fair. up on my list. But I can also well, see my it is my list, but I can also see my own rose colored glasses of like, you know, it's ruckus and it's a Louisiana collaboration. Yeah, I know it's my list and I don't have to apologize to anyone for making my list, but I'm still a people pleaser. So I'm like, my list has to be somewhat agreeable with everyone else. Yeah, um, I mean, that's I, I would say that's the same like the same thing for uh the lunar roams yeah. you know is yeah i don't think i think people would look at that and be like i don't even remember that right. shoe coming out of big but to me i was like yeah. i looked into that shoe a lot yeah um, i almost actually put this shoe as my runner up oh, or my my, my uh, sorry mention? not runner up yeah. honorable mention almost to the the caveat of why you have it as your number one uh, is because it's on I, the line of retro yeah, yeah. I do see it. I'm like, I know there's something different with this shoe and I yeah. can appreciate the story of, we feel we're at a point now where, you know, we can, we can finally show what we wanted it to originally mm -hmm. be. Yeah. Um, but not knowing, does that make it enough to be not a retro or yeah, not yeah. a retro, not a real magic. I know it's not a real magic yeah technically i guess you could say the air max that we know and love today is a reimagine of hot this take. 
hot take. Look so out. really, I could just be like, well, this is nothing different than what we have. And it's like, this is, well, actually, this is imagined. Everything you've known up yeah, until now is reimagined. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So yeah. if anything, that might be the biggest case as to why it's not is that, well, you, this just seems that way because yeah. actually what we have now is the reimagined version. Because <laughs> you've been lied to through revisionist history. Boring flip. Yeah. <laughs> so there you have it. Our 2023 sneakers of the year. Do you want to give them your quick wow. recap from honorable mention to first place? Absolutely. Honorable mention pandas again, spiteful put. It's a pretty good. He was shoe. about just so everyone again to remind everyone, he was about to make an informed take on the air max one yeah. big bubble, but it said he went spite would be funny for an episode. So he spited, <laughs> which I'm not mad at it. I'm happy you yeah. did it. Um, third place. The, the, the lunar Rome, uh, with that alabaster colorway one bang over colorway. And again, it's just a personal favorite for me. Um, you're luckily I didn't put a Nicole, Nicole McLaughlin on this list, but I'm still going to say her name <laughs> because I, because I stand that lady. Um, I'm still just going to name drop Nicole McLaughlin every yeah. episode. Uh, second place. I have the Amon Manier Jordan five. I would say specifically, um, that dust colorway because. I do think it's it is yeah. my uh, my favorite of the two, mm -hmm. uh, and then my first place uh, the Bodega New Balance six ten, the trail less taken. Yeah, my list honorable mention the Mischief Big Red Boot again, not a sneaker, not a shoe I like, <laughs> not a shoe I want to wear, but I'm not going to sit here and pretend that it was not a huge moment this year, if not the biggest. But you're going to remember it. Uh, third place the Ruckus and New Balance Numeric Voodoo Doll four forty, shameless shilling for local company. Sure. Also great storytelling. You betcha. Sure. Louisiana. Check. Love it. Uh, second place, the Kith, Asics, and Marvel <laughs> capsule collection. Blind box. Fun concept. Love a new release idea, especially after this many years. Yes, sir. And first place, uh, debatably, the Nike Air Max 186 Big Bubble. Is it a retro? Is it not a retro? There's an idea. Leave a comment down below. Let us know. Does it count? Does it not count for you? As for me, yeah. who knows? It's on my list as of now. Ask me in a week. Maybe it'll change. But there you um, go. I think looking at the final mix here, and this is like really the first time I'm kind of like cognitively processing it. Very surprised to only see one Nike on my list. Yeah. As we said at the top of the episode, such big Nike boys. Um, and there's so, you know, there were like, I think to your point, like the Amma Manier 5 Dawn, love that shoe. The Nike SB mm -hmm. Jordan 4, great shoe like that shoe yeah don't yeah it's good oh yeah not the top of my list the j balvin jordan three that he did this year another oh, yeah. another clean shoe just not my favorite thing so like there was a lot of good stuff that came out this year i think all in all that's what makes it so tough that's what made my list so tough to put together was that it felt like in years past any one of those shoes i just named had it been the only one of those to come out would like be hands down the only thing we'd be talking about right now but when you yeah. stack them all within the same year, it's just kind of like, man, it's it's yeah. just hard to pick amongst everyone being a great shoe, you know? No, I agree. I think honestly, when when I was looking at the shoes, I I was between Nike and New Balance a lot. Mm -hmm. You know, I would see, uh, you know, with the Action Bronze and New Balance, not the first colorway, killer, um, killer as well. But Lapis Lazuli I mean, nine ninety V six. You're saying? Yeah. Well, that blue, a lot of blue. killer. Yeah. A lot of blue. Yeah. Um, but I really came down to that, but I mean, yeah, I think, I think a real great list. I think we have shoes in there. I think, I think we both have maybe some hot take esque for sure. I think we have some per just personal. I like this one that I think people should be talking about that maybe yeah. aren't talking about. So I think a good list overall. I think we hit yeah. a lot of, a lot of great, a lot of greatness. Absolutely. So thank you everyone. Oh, it's always heavy, heavy heart at this time of the episode at this time of wow, the year thank you now? everyone for tuning into another episode of shoe podcast this is the official the last. last episode of season five this was uh wow. first episode of 2024 but last episode of season five just due to timing uh yeah thank you everyone for tuning into a whole nother season here we are going to be taking Eesh. the rest of january off to plan for season six and also because not too many sneaker releases typically happen in january can't wait someone clip this for the first week of february when we come back and we're like that crazy thing that ha right just because we said it now can you imagine happen yeah uh yeah. which well typically you got you got kanye releasing 200 socks yeah. you got stanley cups reselling on StockX. we could do a whole 
state of the shooting right now. I was going to say, and then, I mean, Travis Scott gave a fan a completely unreleased pair of shoes. <laughs> so dude, we're already <laughs> here's the thing. I, six days into I, January. I, I know. Be- I so badly want to sit down and plan for season six that I so badly want to take a break from doing this for a bit. But at the same time, I'm like, there's a lot of like interesting things happening right now that we should sit down and talk about. So, but no, we are going to let ourselves rest. We're going to just be friends and play video games together for a month or something like that and plan uh, for the next season. And we'll be back in February. If there's anything you really want to see from us next season, let us know. Uh, my headphones sound weird with this over uh, with the hoodie over it. So do me a favor. I'm going to roll the oh. socials. Go ahead and shout these out for us real quick. If you could go ahead, get on the, get on the internet, shoepodcast.com. All the links are there. Okay. I'm going to say this right now. If you've got a social media link, type in shoe podcast. Yep. We're there. <laughs> and if, then if you type in shoe podcast and we're not there, then we're not there. <laughs> we are uh, usually that easy. Yeah, we lucked out that we were able to get that name on really all the platforms we want to be on. So, yeah. Okay. And then also, okay, park your Honda Civic. Okay. Go to your work or house. Go to YouTube. Watch the videos. We're funnier when you can see us. (laughs) Let's uh, quick check real quick. And this is going to date us. Uh, One moment. Let's get it. Let's get it pulled up. Hmm. If you could, if you're watching this and you're not, because statistically, I know a lot of y'all are and you're not, if you are not subscribed as of right now, 389 subscribers, 11 subs. Wow. Guys, come on. Get us to the big four. We're trying to get to 400 here. If you're not, oh, no. hit that subscribe button. We greatly appreciate it. Uh, yeah. I know we said a lot. Is there anything else you want to say for the people before we go? Oh, man, it just, um, it's just crazy that we've been doing this for five seasons. Yep. It's, it's great. I absolutely love it. It's been the coolest thing, um, to make connections with so many different people. Mm-hmm. Um, the interviews have been amazing. Uh, and then just a cool thing to just be kind of like, you know, hanging out with each other, going around town and be like, Hey, you're the shoe podcast guys, or you're those podcast guys. And I was like, Holy cow. That's insane. Yeah. Um, so really cool. Love whenever that happens. Love to be able to, uh, Love to be able to talk to people, love to be able to, um, especially really just gift to a lot of those people who, uh, you know, we think, especially like all of our, like ruckus boys, all the people that we interview being able to just be like, Hey, here's this thing. And just the true appreciation that I see mm-hmm. with people who, who get hooked up with like big brands who yeah. <laughs> get this, you know, passion project of ours and we can give that to them and to yeah. see their excitement and just love of it is like, Oh, cool i'm interviewing someone who really does love sneakers so yeah it's all that's been like my favorite thing mm-hmm. is just to talk to so many people who just truly love the sneaker culture yeah um it's beautiful it's beautiful so i'm i'm it's insane that we we've, we've done this for five seasons i can't wait to see you know what 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 the big six is gonna do six rings right here right now uh-huh. you know it people mm. <sighs> all right what about you what do you, what do you, what do you, what are you leaving people off with? And then what are you going to then? Cause you know, we're in a weird, you know, end start, you know, end of five start of 2024. Yeah. So what are you leaving people with, but then also giving them, uh, leaving them with just like in words or like, I don't know. <laughs> um, yeah, as always, just thank you everyone who's been watching this. Uh, we often say, and I try not to fall into the trap that like, you know, we don't measure the success and the value and the quality of what we're doing by like the views or the likes or the subscribers. I know. Right. Exactly. To that point, we would (laughs) stop. I just begged you for 11 subscribers. Find me anyone else who's doing like the level of quality production we're doing. That's like, if we could get 11 subscribers, you know, right. Like, um, but it's not lost on me that like, you know, for a lot of people, right. That like, we're doing this as much as we're doing this, you'd post a video and you'd get like, call it 50 views, whatever. And you'd be like 50, that's it. You know, like everyone else is getting like Mm -hmm. thousands, millions, whatever. But like, for me, it's not lost that like, I don't personally know 50 people that listen to our podcast. Right. So that means like, there are people that I don't know. And presumably you don't know that are watching this and that will never like just stop to see. So basically, right. Exactly. That it's like, Oh, people I don't know are just like watching this and presumably enjoying it. Uh, so yeah, 
Thank you, everyone. Even if it was out ten, there. I'd be like, yeah. I could name six. I could name right. maybe two people. Who right. Are exactly. It. Yeah. And and so. both of us are sitting on this call right now, and it's us. So yeah. yeah. So yeah, I it's, got that bell rung. <laughs> it's uh, like I said, it's not lost on me. Thank you, everyone, so much for your support. It's yeah, super cool. Anytime we bump into someone who happens to recognize us from doing this, uh, that's never not weird to me. But uh, like the most flattering sort of weird. So yeah, five great seasons. Season six coming around. I have plenty of ideas. I'm sure you have ideas as well. So we're going to sit and talk about them and see what we can do for next year. Uh, even bigger and better. More this, more that. Lots more to come. That's all I'll say right now. I'll, I'm going to give you big yeah. local band energy and say big things coming soon. How do you like that? Yeah, there you yeah. go. Check the MySpace. That's right. That's where we're most active. <sighs> All right, one last time for season five. Thank you, everyone, so much for watching another episode of Shoe Podcast. I'm your co-host, Ryan Landry. I'm your co-host, Tanner Young. We will not be back next week with another one. We'll be back sometime in February. Everyone stay well. We'll see you in like a month. Okay, bye.